Who is the biggest band of the year? Well, I guess even someone who isn't a big fan of U2 would have to admit that 87 was their year. Let's take a closer look now at the boys from Dublin. It's an LP where we open ourselves to outside influences like gospel and blues and American folk music. It's about I think people trying to find an identity. It's, it's about a misplaced people. It's about traveling people. The Joshua Tree was one of the biggest albums of the year, selling well over four million copies and riding the number one spot for nine weeks. U2 stepped into the middle of controversy as their tour began in Arizona. Governor Evan Meekham had eliminated Martin Luther King's birthday as a state holiday, and many artists protested by refusing to play the state. Since U2 took such inspiration from Dr. King, fans wondered why they played. I think of all groups, in a way, U2 should be on stage in Arizona um, to speak out for the memory of Martin Luther King, who was a, a great um, American. The tour took them to all parts of America and gave them all kinds of new experiences. Well, so far on this tour, we've, we've learned, we've discovered Mexican food, the tango, and the truth about Las Vegas. While U2 discovered America, more Americans discovered the best of U2. of the group is the audience. It's, it's how fanatical and how loyal they are. They have like a special bond with their fans. They don't, like other bands, like would just come out and like wouldn't even like bother with their fans. They come out and talk to their fans, sign autographs. I used to kind of think, you know, do they really get what, what it's all about? But even if they don't get what it's all about, even if they just come to the concerts because you know, we're a good band to see live. It's okay to They're just your regular kind of highly intelligent organization. If you can't get to concerts, videos are the way to see the band. And during 1987, U2 released three of them. But Where the Streets Have No Name is the video that will be remembered. Now, in fact, the cops won the day in Los Angeles. We made it look like we did. And it was a fair fight, um, as I say, but we sort of lost in the end. The fall leg of the tour featured the band playing in outdoor stadiums as well as arenas and being captured on film for a movie to be released in 1988. In Philadelphia, Bono fell and dislocated his shoulder, but the band refused to slow down. In New York, they found time to rehearse and play with a gospel choir that had recorded a version of one of their songs. They also appeared on Robbie Robertson's comeback album and donated a track to the very special Christmas LP. In November, U2 played and filmed a free concert in downtown San Francisco as a gift to their fans. I just feel that rock and roll should be able to play a free concert in the middle of the city. It's, you know, so many dark and um, ugly things stop the traffic in our cities, and I wanted something light and, and, uh, and beautiful to stop the traffic, and that's what it, our concert was, and I just wrote, stop the traffic, you know, rock and roll stops the traffic. Bono did have to pay for his actions. He was charged with malicious mischief and had to pay to have the statue cleaned. It's almost, um, you know, let's boot me come out type party, actually. With that, U2 announced that they would end the year with two concerts in Arizona to wrap filming of their movie. Tickets were only $5, and over 120,000 fans showed up to denounce Governor Meekham's stand on Martin Luther King and celebrate a great year for rock and roll's reigning champs.